storm today, tonight, and early on Tuesday, then clearing tomorrow afternoon. You'll be in the low to mid-60s this afternoon, around 40 tonight, and upper 50s to around 60 on Tuesday, rather breezy to windy on Tuesday. Wednesday, mostly sunny, near 50. Your life, your music, we're KLEK 102.5 FM. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Ollie Barrett. The UK says it will respond robustly if there is found to be Russian involvement in the exposure of a former spy to an unknown substance. South Korea says it and the North will hold a rare summit next month at which the country's leaders will meet. France plans to make 15 the age of sexual consent and lawmakers in Florida have voted to bring in new gun control measures to raise the age permitted to buy firearms and require a three-day waiting period. It's 9.01. JLEK LP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning, everyone, and happy Tuesday to you. I hope that you're having a great start to your day. Welcome to Community Conversations. I am your host, Corbila Jones, and my very special guest, is Miss Car- Mrs. Kara Maxwell. Hi, everyone. Today is March 6th, uh, which is World Lymphedema Awareness Day, and we're going to talk about all things lymphedema. We did not get a medical professional um, booked, but we have enough experience as patients to give you some information so that you can become more informed, so that you are prompted, hopefully, to do some more research and then start, you know, talking to your family members and paying attention to your own body. Um, not everyone will develop lymphedema, but everyone has a lymphatic system, and everyone needs to make sure your lymphatic system is functioning properly. Um, before we get into that information, I want Miss Kara to please give some introduction of herself. Excuse her, she's still kind of, <laughs> you know, ready. prepped and ready, yeah. so scoot a little closer for me. Yes, my name is Kara Maxwell. Um, I was diagnosed with lymphedema in November 2016. As going through breast cancer treatment, I, it was only mentioned to me maybe three times, and there was no emphasis on the it being such a high risk or such a big side effect to the treatments that I did go through. Um, whenever I did find out that I had lymphedema, I was very unaware of many of the of the statistics and facts and how it happened and everything so whenever i did find out i started looking into it more and finding out more things that didn't sit right with me and kobila reached out to me as i posted on facebook that i was diagnosed with it and we discussed it more and as we discussed it we found problems and when you find problems it's better to find a re- find out how you can fix those problems go ahead so whenever we were speaking and this was in december we decided that we wanted to do something not just a little something, but we wanted to make an impact in not just the lymphedema world, but in our own community. And that's how we came up with the Lymphedema Lunch and Learn. Yes, ma'am. And I am so excited about this. Um, I've seen a lot of Lunch and Learns on a, a lot of other health-related topics. And I was like, why can't we do this? You know, this is something that is needed here in Jonesboro and I share sometimes a little bit of my story and I know people still don't know the full scope um, and I do want to address like the comment I made yesterday on Facebook I said I officially hate lymphedema um, what people don't understand that it affects your body in ways that you are not used to um, for those that have it in their lower um, limbs you cause a severe swelling your limbs double triple sometimes quadruple in size depending on what your original body size was this is not a fat person's disease this disease does not discriminate against ethnicity gender age 
or body size. Um, there are babies that are born with it and we'll get more into the different stages and primary versus secondary. Mainly with primary, it's heredity or you've had cancer or there's some other underlying issues. With secondary, it basically just, I hate to say pops up. There has been some damage or injury to your lymph nodes or your lymphatic system and it stops functioning properly and then on uh, lymphedema is on set. So we're going to get into <clears throat> talking about what is the lymphatic system. People hear about it, but I don't think they just truly know, you know, much about it. Um, your lymphatic system controls a lot of things in your body. It, there's a lot of different organs that are incorporated into your lymphatic system. So, Carrie, do you have some information you want to share on that? Yes. My son, I asked him questions. I said, Tristan, what are some things that you would like to know about lymphedema? And one of the questions he asked was, is it contagious? I was like, hmm, why would you ask that? He goes, because a lot of things that are medically diagnosed are cont contagious. It is not contagious, but in the further along with the diagnosis and the further along you go with lymphedema the infections can be contagious okay okay so let's talk about the lymphatic system and for those that may want to do some research if you want to get started somewhere you can actually go to the national lymphedema network or www.lymphnet.org and they have a lot of information there are some publications um, they have a lot of um, national sponsors and affiliates you can become a member but there's some information that you can look at for free um, what is the lymphatic system it says to better understand lymphedema we must understand the normal lymphatic system the sis this system functions parallel to the circulatory system and consists of lymph vessels, lymph nodes, and lymph tissue. The most important role of the lymphatic system is to absorb and transport large molecules, including protein and cellular debris. This is not protein that comes from meat. It's a protein that's produced within your body, which are too large to be collected by veins and the venous capillaries. This lymph fluid is then transported to the lymph nodes that act as filtering stations in the body. In the lymph nodes, cells from the body natural defense system called lymphocytes help fight bacteria and viruses. So if your lymph nodes are not functioning properly, if they're not filtering, if they're not pumping this fluid out of your body, if toxins are not being released from your body in a timely manner, that's when the buildup begins. That's when the infection set up. Uh, people with lymphedema or improperly functioning lymphatic systems often get an infection called cellulitis. It starts as a red burning sensation on some part of your body wherever the lymph nodes are the most affected, um, defective rather, and then it can cause blisters that fill up with fluid and then from there it's i hate to say a downhill battle it's a never-ending battle once you start getting cellulitis you're more likely to keep getting it over and over again it's, it becomes debilitating yes um most often people who get cellulitis and anyone out there um who has ever had cellulitis can attest to this it is linked to the staph infection it affects your body in very similar ways and so um it if it goes undetected or untreated for too long it can set up sepsis in your body in your bloodstream which can be very detrimental so and usually i've had sepsis before I, the only thing that i noticed was i was a little tired by the time i got medical help it was really bad i was in the hospital for nine days well and I had, I was running an extremely high fever and didn't even know it. All right, so we have one Facebook comment from Miss Mallory. She says, my mom has it caused by breast cancer. I wish, I'm sorry, Mal, I would have definitely would love for her to come and share her story, but we will be hosting other community events, not just the month of March, but throughout the year, because this is something that the community needs to know more about. And not just the community, but we feel that the medical professionals in this area 
kind of need to step up their game. And I'm sorry to throw shade, seem like I'm throwing shade or throwing shots at them, but I have dealt with doctors and different individuals and the medical professionals in the different medical arenas um, that have not been able to treat me properly because they simply don't know how to deal with this. Um, I do appreciate all the help that I have received thus far. However, I don't want to have to travel to Memphis, Little Rock, Texas, Atlanta, or somewhere else to receive treatment when we have a wealth of doctors right here in our own area. Stated in the medical journal, um, it says the lymphedema is the least explored, least understood, yet most prevalent medical condition. Yes, um, this disease affects mil right here in America, about 10 million people, and then millions more, hundreds of millions more worldwide. Of 2017 in the medical journal, it estimated 120 million people around the world living with lymphedema. 20 but million. 120 million. 120 million. Yes. That's 120 million people too many. Um, one of the reasons that this disease goes underdiagnosed, undertreated, is because a lot of the signs and symptoms mimic those of other diseases and other things that are going on in your body. When someone is in like stage one or stage two, it looks simply like pitted edema. Basically, you've either gained some weight or you your diet has changed, you know, your blood pressure may be up, whatever the case, and so your body start takes starts taking on fluid. And so you if you ever notice some swelling in some part of your body, you press on it and it stays where you pressed it, and then it eventually pops back up. That's called pitted edema. I just want to tell everyone, do not ignore those signs. That's how it started for me. I thought simply I was just gaining weight because I had a desk job. I didn't, you know, I wasn't very active. My diet wasn't great. And so I thought, okay, you know, this is just me gaining weight. Well, I started noticing fluid leaking from my skin in different parts of my leg. Again, I ignored it, you know, didn't know much about it. Even though I was advised, go to the doctor, you know, get that checked out. I let it go for far too long. And then in November of 2009, I got an infection and my battle started from then. Um, the infection um, led me to be hospitalized for over a week um, getting IV antibiotics. Uh, they sent me home with more antibiotics. But from that point, the blisters had already began. My skin had already started breaking down. And there, my battle started. I developed wounds that would not heal. Um, going back and forth. I started going back and forth to the wound clinic. Um, and it was just a never ending battle. Week after week, dealing with having to wear absorbent bandages, um, having pain, being sluggish. Just my body changed like almost overnight. <laughs> And I'm sure Tara, uh, Kara can attest to this as well. Yes, like the first thing that I noticed was like my arm felt heavy. And it wasn't just like a normal heavy. It felt like I was, it felt like I had a gallon of milk attached to my arm and it was hard to lift. And then I noticed the swelling and the tightness. It, I wouldn't say swelling. It was more of a tightness. And that's when I spoke to my nurse and she immediately got me help and was like okay I know what this is we're gonna get it treated now and within 10 days I was seeing a lymphedema specialist Wow. Um, and when I first I don't want to say diagnosed when it was first recognized or realized that this was more than just my weight it still wasn't officially called lymphedema it took several years before the doctors addressed it as lymphedema and usually people who develop lymphedema uh, which at this point you're probably stage three or four and beyond you also develop lipoedema which is a fatty tissue buildup and it's not like regular fat from just gaining weight it's a different type of fat that's entangled in different fibers in your body and it's harder to lose and it causes the for women it causes your hips your buttocks your thighs to spread um, and not in a good way so okay well getting back to lymphedema let's look at some signs and symptoms um, of lymphedema 
at the various stages. And again, this information is coming from www.lymphnet.org, but there are some other reputable sites, but this is just one that I found that has been very helpful to me. All right, so on this website, they actually have a stage zero. And this is called non-visible latency. Lymphedema can develop very slowly with some of the early changes happening within the tissue without obvious noticeable swelling or symptoms. Protein molecules can accumulate beneath the skin and pull extra water into the affected area, occasionally resulting in sensations of heaviness or fatigue in the limb or region, despite a normal measurement of tissue or limb size in that area. The early changes leading to lymphedema have begun and generally respond to treatment. This stage should not be ignored. Instead, prompt treatment will reduce the risk of worsening edema. So if you're in stage zero, you feel a little heaviness, more heavy than normal, go to your doctor. Do not overlook these signs and symptoms. Okay, for those of you who work on your feet, on concrete, um, who walk a lot for your job, and you notice one leg may be swelling more than the other, you might feel some um, pain, discomfort, go to your doctor, please. Um, another piece of advice I would give you, invest in compression socks or compression holes, especially when you're having to be up on your feet more often. Um, that will help alleviate some of the swelling and some diet changes do not help in either. And we'll get into that a little bit more, okay? Next, there's stage one. This is called spontaneously reversible. The characteristics of stage one include puffy appearance of the hand or foot, father's point on the limb. There may be impressions from pushing on the skin, referred to as pitting, pitting edema. It may be more difficult to see veins on the top of the hand or foot. It is not unusual for swelling to improve at night but return during the day. Similarly, elevation of the affected area may temporarily help reduce the edema. This could be due to lower protein content of the lymph fluid early in, development, early in the development of lymphedema or the fact that lymphedema hasn't been present long enough to result in fibrosis. So again, stage zero, stage one, treatable and reversible if you get the help you need in a timely manner. Again, you're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. If you have any questions or comments, please drop them in our on our Facebook live stream. Or you can give us a call here in the studio, 870-277-1080. Carrie, you have something you'd like to add? Yes. Um, when I was talking to my son, he was asking me, he's like, but how can, can it just spread to other parts of your body? And I was like, hmm, made me look it up. And I talked to Kabila about it. And it confirmed lymphedema can spread throughout the body, yet primary lymphedema patients are at higher risk because of the lymphatic system drainage already being damaged at birth. Yes. And um, you can get lymphedema anywhere. I have talked to people that... Karen and I have joined our state um, lobby, lymphedema, I guess you say lobby team. Yes. <laughs> um, because there is um, a group of people that started this program called the Lymph, or initiative called the Lymphedema Treatment Act. And we'll definitely give you some more information about that. But we joined our state team and found out, I, you're talking to one of the patients, she has lymphedema in her neck and her face and she has to wear basically a face mask of sorts or like a lift um a chin you may call it a chin strap you know yeah it's basically a compression garment that goes over her head her face is out of course but it helps to lift up her neck and face to keep that fluid from really pulling and tugging on those areas and causing more problems maybe with her vocal cords or even her breathing so people get lymphedema anywhere as for men, they can get it in their genital region, genital region, and cause it causes major, major swelling and discomfort to the point where they're either bedridden or have to get surgery to get those um, tissues, that tissue removed because it's grown out so far. The most common forms, the way to um, get 
lymphedema is through cancer treatments and those are through like breast cancer treatments bladder kidney most commonly in males than anything with cancer related with the male anatomy okay. and also the female uh, anatomy just not knowing that what can save your life can also be, also give you a lifelong condition that you how you suffer from and if you do not take care of it can become really bad and during my research i found that people who have had surgery or been treated for neck and head cancer they are at a very high risk like almost 100 percent of getting lymphedema so because your lymph nodes have been either taken out messed with um, lymph nodes play a major major role in your body think of your circulatory system pumps in the good stuff, pumps the good stuff through your body, but your lymphatic system in turn takes the bad stuff out. Well, if your lymph nodes are not functioning and filtering properly, if those vessels are clogged, if they're damaged, if they're compressed um, by the weight of the tissue and the fluid buildup, things are not gonna go out and they have to go somewhere. So unfortunately, it's gonna cause your tissue to swell outward. Or in whatever direction it can go in. Just speaking on um, what Kabila said about people having treatment for cancer in their neck or lymphedema in their neck or face, in Northeast Arkansas, there is no one who treats lymphedema above the shoulders. Above the shoulders. No one. Wow. All right. Okay, we're going to have to leave you right there, and we're going to take a quick break. Again, you're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Drop us a message on our Facebook live stream or call us in the studio, 870-277-1080. And we'll be right back after these announcements. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. What's your dream? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. Benjamin Mays, mentor to Dr. Martin Luther King, said, The tragedy of life doesn't lie in not reaching your goal. The tragedy lies in having no goal to reach. It isn't a calamity to die with dreams unfulfilled, but it is a calamity not to dream. It isn't a disgrace not to reach the stars, but it is a disgrace to have no stars to reach for. Well, no matter how discouraging things may seem in the world around us or in our own lives, it's important to have a goal and to teach our children to set goals. Then press on every day to reach them, supporting each other as you go. Remember, your family first. Want to connect with Mark on Twitter? You can. Follow him at twitter.com slash Mark Merrill. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K-N-O-M-E-G-A 1908. Dot com. Hey ladies, it's Nettie Jones, the Girlfriends Therapist. I'm here with my girls, Elise Lyles and Brianna Hill, the Fab Squad. Hey! hey. We're coming to Jonesboro, KLEK 102.5 FM. So tune in every Wednesday from 10 to 11 to Your Life with Nettie Jones. We're living it fabulously every day. You don't want to miss it. Tell a friend. Hello, I'm Officer Victoria Evans. I have always had a desire to help others in need and to be an example and role model to young women by encouraging them to never give up on their dreams. My dream was to become a police officer and to serve my community. In 2016, that dream became a reality and it is the most rewarding experience of my life. Now I want to let you know about the same opportunity. The Jonesboro Police Department will conduct testing every month for patrol officers. Applications are available online at jonesboropolice.com or at the Police Department, 1001 South Caraway Work. The Jonesboro Police Department offers a competitive salary, health, and retirement benefits, top-of-the-line training, and most importantly, the chance to make a difference in the Jonesboro community. Join me in making Jonesboro a better place. The Jonesboro Police Department is an equal opportunity employer, and women and minorities are especially encouraged to apply. More information is available at 870-935-5657. 
The Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated was established on June 28, 1997 by 13 dynamic women who accepted the challenge and honor of chartering the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter. Today, the chapter continues to impact the Jonesboro community by sponsoring programs such as the Sonia D. Williams Scholarship Breakfast, Back to School Bash, Disaster Preparedness, Delta Academy, Empower African Girls, and Autism Awareness. Our focus correlates with a national theme, uncompromising commitment to communities, service, leadership, empowerment. Our chapter supports Delta's five-point programmatic thrusts, economic development, educational development, international awareness and involvement, physical and mental health, and political awareness and involvement. More information about the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated is available at www.jonesboroalumnidst.org or via email jonesboroalumni at live.com. The Epic Center, located at 1899 Hasbrook Road, County Road 333, is Jonesboro's newest venue for entertainment for the entire family. They offer an auditorium with theater-style seating for up to 1,100 guests, a large stage, professional lighting and sound, dressing rooms, concessions, and more. Available for weddings, concerts, pageants, birthday parties, showers, and more. Booking and other information is available at Epic Center Jonesboro on Facebook, epiccenterjonesboro.com and at 870-530-5841. House of Details, located at 3217 Herb Street, Suite C, is a proud supporter of KLEK, offering detailing on any type of vehicle, waxing, clear coat protection, basic wash, hand wash, shampoo, interior cleaning, buffering, headlight restoration, pickup, delivery, and more. With a motto of, anything mean, we can clean. Details available via Quentin Bogard at 870-273-5187. House of Details on Facebook and houseofdetailsjonesboro.com. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. All right, welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Quabila Hardin. No, Quabila Jones. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Quabila Jones, along with Mrs. Kara Maxwell. And we're talking all things lymphedema. Today is World Lymphedema Awareness Day. There are, as Kara stated earlier, over 120 million people worldwide suffering from this disease and sometimes i hate to use the word suffering but some people are suffering but they're still living they're still trying to live their best life possible they just want to get the help they need um to they can live a better life you know get back to some higher quality of life yes higher Our quality, quality. Of life okay so before we went to break we were talking about the different stages and i'm going to quickly run through stage two and three so that we can get on to talking about um some treatment options and also our lunch and learn kara and i have partnered together along with health south rehab rehabilitation hospital to put together the first lymphedema lunch and learn all right so stage two of lymphedema and this website only goes to stage two but other websites go stage four and five stage two is spontaneously irreversible so by this point you've already developed lymphedema there's no going back now you're just basically treating the symptoms um the swelling takes on a spongy consistency and pitting is less present at this stage lymphedema does not respond to elevation this tissue consistency change is caused by the formation of fibrosis or scar tissue with gradual thickening of the tissue on the limb as it increased in size all right and stage three is lymphostatic elephantitis basically people at this point and beyond their limbs are so big it looks like what you know as elephantitis elephantitis titus okay um where the limb is just huge i hate to say huge it is for some people because especially it's more noticeable on someone who's already a slimmer build medium to slim and you see one leg different than the other um they are dealing with lymphedema um at this stage the skin typically becomes very dry and scaly and the limb or other affected body region becomes very large there may be fluid leaking from the limb and skin 
Skin infections are common. The weight of the limb can be debilitating. Excess skin projections, including blisters, can form to attempt to contain the fluid, and these projections pose an even greater infection risk. I can attest to this because this is where I am. While these stages are all different, they are continuous. When lymphedema remains untreated, it will progress. Treatment of lymphedema focuses on halting this progression while also improving the symptoms. Specifically, treatment focuses on reduction of fluid volume, but also on softening tissue fibrosis, reducing risk of infection and maintaining or enhancing function of the limb. At this point, um, someone would need to invest in compression garments, um, do what they call lymphatic massage, or even dry brushing with the boar's a hair brush. Um, and there's a certain direction and a certain method used, which if you go to see a certified lymphedema therapist, they will Ex they will train you on what to do at home when you're out of their office. Um, someone who goes through compression therapy has to get their limbs wrapped, and it's not with a normal ACE bandage. It is more with a it's a compression bandage made with a certain type of stretch in it that pushes the skin in a, just the right way to help the vessels open up and the fluid to flow better. I know with me, I had to have mine. It started out with wrapping my fingers individually and then moving my up to my hand, going and then going to another bandage that started at my knuckles that worked its way up right above my wrist. And then another type of bandage that went from my wrist to the middle of my forearm. Another bandage that went from my forearm to my elbow that wrapped around a certain way so that I could bend it without pinching my skin and another bandage that went over wrapped around that and then it went with foam and ace bandages and it's multiple I know I had at least eight or nine different types of bandages and foam that I had to use to wrap my arm to get it down to a certain size before I could use a garment like the one that I have on my arm it is a very, very tedious process. The materials that you need are can be slightly expensive due to what you need. Um, for those that need compression garments for their legs, um, if you buy one leg sleeve, or you call it a sleeve, um, you know you're still looking at fifty, sixty dollars, depending on the brand, company, um, the size, and things of that nature. If you invest in the whole legging, a whole pair of leggings. A full you know full garment you're still looking at over $500 or more depending on size material the function of the garment whether it's for daytime or nighttime on and on and on now there are some lymphedema pumps now fortunately some some insurance companies will pay for it this is a problem that a lot of people are running into insurance is simply not paying for a lot of these um, things that individuals need to get the treatment that they need. I was fortunate enough that Medicaid paid for my lymphedema pumps. Basically, I call them my moon boots. They're these big plastic type um, boots um, that go over my legs, they're Velcro and strap, and they connect to a pump that pushes air in and out in a timed manner. And I do this for an hour. I'm supposed to do it three times a day. However, um, yes, I've been slacking, but I do need to get back on it as well. I do need to get back on it to help. Unfortunately, I don't have compression garments, so um, it's kind of counterproductive. I know with even just the wrapping, it is difficult to do on your own. Mm -hmm. L let me tell you, if I had to, whenever I would take a shower at night, I would have to time that with my husband's schedule on coming home so that he could wrap it for me it's not it's hard to do and it it kind of sucks knowing that you can't do something for yourself yes, and you have to rely on someone else yes ma'am and then whenever you have like two girls and you have hair to do oh let me tell you that's difficult because you have to time your schedule around okay is my hand gonna be swollen too swollen to do this or is it gonna take too long to do their hair this way I need to wear my glove for this amount of time 
So it, it takes a whole family to, to do hair. <laughs> I have to rely on my husband and son to help me do my daughter's hair. Yes, it affects your life in so many ways. One is time consuming to do your compression garments. And for me, I have to do what I call wound care. I have to cleanse and apply absorbent bandages to different areas of my legs. That can be very time consuming. So my day starts very early in the morning just so that I am ready to get here to the station on time. Um, it affects your life physically because one, now your body feels heavier in certain areas so you're not able to walk as fast, move as fast, move as efficiently, stand as long. For Kara with her arms, she may not be able to hold certain things as long or certain of a certain weight anymore due mm -hmm. to the heaviness of her length, of her arm. For me, um, I have to walk very slowly and I have to be very calculated in my movements. Um, like yesterday, again, I mentioned uh, how I had a moment. I was at the uh, Craig County Courthouse, Courthouse Annex. When I stepped off the elevator, I fell. In that moment, I wasn't even worried about being hurt. I was more embarrassed about, here I am on the floor and I don't know what my dress was doing in the back. You know, so the embarrassment of that and having people to have to help me. I don't talk about this often when it happens. This is not the first time I fell in public, but it's just embarrassing. It's it it's humbling, I can say. Um luckily I do not get physically hurt, but you know, some people say, Okay, this this too shall pass. Sometimes it's hard to say, okay, it was a moment, it's over. Even though I consider myself to be a woman of faith, I still have my moments where I need to just let that moment have its time so that I can push on. But if I try to sweep it away right away, it still builds up and builds up. So I need to just cry it out, scream it out, whatever my, I'm feeling at that moment. Just because I get knocked down, no, I'm not knocked out. So... Um, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure Kara may have some other stories to share and then we're going to get into our lymphedema lunch and learn. Yes. One night I decided I'm so tired. I was just exhausted. And after I got my kids to bed, I went ahead and undid the bandages and got in the shower. And I was figured, okay, I could just do this myself. So I get out of the shower and I dry off and I go ahead and moisturize my arm because one important things that you do have to do is make sure the skin stays moisturized and free of germs. Yes, ma'am. And I sit in my bed and I get so frustrated that I could not do it myself. I sat there and cried. I called Kobila because I told her, I said, I don't understand how people do this by themselves. She said, I don't, I just don't understand it. Why do we have to have this? Yes. <laughs> I'm grateful that she trusted me to call me and I hope that I was some kind of help <laughs> to her in that moment. But I do totally understand the frustration. When you're so used to doing things for yourself, by yourself, and then all of a sudden you need help, it's, yeah, it takes you down a couple of notches. Um, I can definitely attest to that. All right, so transitioning into a lunch and learn. Again, this is opportunity for you all to come out. Again, it's at Health South Rehabilitation Hospital, which is 1201 Fleming Avenue, Jonesboro, Arkansas. Um, we are going to be talking about all things lymphedema again this time we're going to have some therapists miss robin jones and amanda moeller um, that works for health south that are going to be talking about the cause and the status of lymphedema and some decongestive therapy uh, which is very important because once you reach again stage three and beyond at this point you're trying to decongest your system you're trying to treat the systems it's not reversible Lymphedema is not curable, or as of yet, anyway. We're going to just speak that into existence. It's not curable as of yet. Doctors around the world are really working on some treatments and doing a lot, a lot of research, um, especially with stem cell therapy. Unfortunately, no one cure has been found that works for all people. There are some treatments and surgical options that have shown tremendous progress. However, no cure. So... 
at this point, when you're patch stage three or four, you need to do some com- decongestion and compression. Um, and as of 1929, the inventor of the MLD method is the only thing being utilized for treatment for lymphedema still to this day. It is one of the major treatments for lymphedema. That is 1929. Just think how many years has gone by without any advances. For so many people who struggle with this disease, this condition on a day-to-day basis, not just them, but their family and friends. Yes, there's a lot of people who have it who either don't know they have it or have never been told, never been, it's never been addressed. They may think I'm just gaining weight or this limb is bigger than the other. I just have some swelling, my blood pressure, my this, my that. No, it could be lymphedema and or lipoedema. So you really need to talk to your doctor and have these conversations. And that's why we're here to start the conversation. You know, it's past time for us to sit back in the shadow and just, you know, be quiet about this. Um, I'm one of those people that's very quiet, very reserved. Um, I'm pretty outspoken. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever comes to my mind, it just kind of comes. It just kind of comes out my mouth. <laughs> I try to be prim and proper, put together, and like nothing's wrong. But at some point, I feel like God pushes me <laughs> to the point where, okay, Gavila, you can no longer hide behind this. Um, I used to be one of those people that kept my hair and makeup done, tried to dress nice, just to masquerade and cover up you know what was really going on but at this point in my life I can no longer do that I have to speak up if not for myself for other people who are living in silence who feel they have nowhere to turn and no one knows what they're going through they have no support system so I have to speak up it's my responsibility I used to have such a big fear of speaking in front of people and then when my oncologist told me he said you know what because i was complaining about not feeling like myself wanting to be back to my old self he told me you'll never be the same find the new you explore the new you and become empowered let this be a positive experience so being able to speak for other people and help other people who aren't able to do so especially with traveling Traveling for someone with lymphedema is very hard. It's uncomfortable. It's hard to find appropriate transportation. And someone who has the time to take them wherever they need to go. I know Kobila can attest to that herself. Honey, we don't even have enough time to talk about (laughs) (laughs) transportation (laughs) issues. Um, I want to give a shout out to um, Miss Latonia Rolf. And Keisha Higgins, Keisha says, thank you ladies for being so open and transparent. This is powerful information. Thank you, Keisha. I gotta give a shout out to Keisha because I wanna say, you know, her and some other people that I know that have dealt with breast cancer, she has given me the encouragement, whether she knows it or not, (laughs) to be more vocal about what's going on. You know, we hear about certain things all the time, but lymphedema is one of those it actually goes hand in hand with breast cancer yes but if you don't have very cancer common with people who go through breast cancer treatment but if you don't have breast cancer then you don't know about lymphedema much about lymphedema so this is where i come in to give you that other side of the story um and so thank you keisha for all that you do and all the support and love that you show us and everyone else out there all of our friends and our family to my friends and family, my church family, people who have been by my side from day one, I can't name you all, but please know that I truly, truly appreciate you. Um, I've cried on a lot of shoulders, on you know, through the phone, of course, but I've cried on a lot of shoulders. I've had a lot of moments, um, highs and lows. And so I just thank everyone <clears throat> for being there for me in my time of need. Um, I know with Keisha Haggins, whenever I found out that I had breast cancer, she was the one person that reached out to me to help me help my children understand what I was going through and what I will go through. I give her props for that. 
she was amazing yes <laughs> she was because there is nowhere else that teaches you or helps you through something like this and having young children it's nowhere no i mean no, there's nowhere nobody talks about it nobody says speaks up about it nobody tells you their experiences with it so thank you thank you so much keisha and you know just to i know keisha's like okay well i gotta talk about me but you know looking at a project that she did it inspired me which i passed on to kara <laughs> to do a project similar and you know, hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have something to present. It will be basically a children's book geared towards um, lymphedema. It will be from a child, a child's perspective. Yes. A child that has lymphedema. I was looking up pictures last night, and I saw a baby that was no more than eight months, maybe a year. You know, they're, I don't know. I don't know baby sizes anymore. <laughs> but this baby's right arm was so swollen. Her little fingers looked like you know, little cheese puffs, and they were just swollen, and um, she had some type of bandage on. There was another one in a video, her parents were showing how they wrap her arm at night, and the baby was really calm, sucking on her pacifier. So from birth to any age, individuals deal with this condition. So when you see someone with a larger than normal limb, don't just stare, maybe ask a question. You know, um, I really would love to get t-shirts to say, just don't stare just ask you know i would rather someone ask me than stare at me um another thing that i struggle with and i don't talk about this often i feel that people just see an overweight woman versus someone with something going on i don't feel like i should have to broadcast 24 hours a day that oh i have lymphedema however i would like people to get to know me before they they judge me <laughs> but this is the real world and so that's wishful thinking so anyway. <laughs> <laughs> all righty so before we get ready to go to break here you have any thoughts you want to throw in yes when I'm not, whenever i do do the book i will be having it come from a child's perspective so that children can understand it more from a child how they look at things and how they describe things and also it will be illustrated by children and I hope that also throughout the year that Kara and I, in partnership with other individuals, um, can also put together some brochures and handouts and just a variety of informational um, pieces to give out to the community. So we're going to get ready for another quick break. Don't go away. We'll be right back after these announcements. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. Our Think Wealthy quote of the week comes from John Rogers, founder of Ariel Investments, one of the nation's largest black-owned asset management firms. Roger says, My father has started buying stocks for me you know, every birthday and every Christmas after I was 12. So I learned to get comfortable with the markets and uh, have total confidence in my ability to pick stocks and sell stocks and do the right things. Rogers is a great example of what happens when we invest in the financial education of our children at an early age. You know, you can't get frightened out of the bottom and go trying out something new and some new concept uh, with you don't know it's going to work. You've got to stick with what you understand and believe in. It's a think long term, stay the course, and not let all the short-term noise pull them out of the market at exactly the wrong time or pull them back in at exactly the wrong time. For more information or for past shows, go to AURN.com. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization dedicated to uncompromising commitment to communities. Service, leadership, empowerment. www.jonesboroalumni.dst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, 
credit cards, and wealth management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. Hello, this is Quabila from Community Conversations. We at KLEK 102.5 FM strive every day to give to you. We strive to give you music that uplifts you. We strive to give you information to keep you informed about news, candidates, and the issues. We strive to give you a place where all voices can be heard. We strive to give you stories of people making a difference for three years and counting. We at Kelly K have strived to give you our very best. We hope and pray that somehow, in some way, KLK has helped to enrich your life. If so, please consider giving to us so that we may continue to give to you as your community radio station. KLK is hosting our first annual pledge drive, March 15th through the 18th, from 6 o'clock a.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. each day. Community leaders and regular people just like you will tell their stories on how KLK has helped them, and you will have an opportunity to call in and make your pledge of support. If you don't want to wait until March 15th, go to our website, www.klekfm.org. Click the donate button and make your donation now. All donations are tax deductible. Please consider giving to us so that we may give back to you. Danny Ford, owner of Glen Sane Motors in Paragould, strongly believes in the values of family and hard work with a commitment to the men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces who keep America free, providing sales and servicing of Chevys, GMCs, Buicks, and Cadillacs. Located at 6345 Highway 49 in Paragould, 870-565-4358. Details at glensaneparagould.com and at klekfm.org. God bless our troops. KLEK thanks C.J. Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street, phone number 1-866-972-1268 or online at lscihelp.com. The Mu Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated was established on January 1, 1977, originally serving Blytheville, Arkansas, and now serving Jonesboro, Blytheville, Osceola, Marion, and West Memphis, Arkansas. Today, the chapter continues to make an impact by focusing on Alpha's national community outreach initiatives, such as My Brother's Keeper, A Voteless People is a Hopeless People, Go to High School, Go to College, Project Alpha, Boy Scouts, and the March of Dimes. The Mu Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is committed to Alpha mission of developing leaders, promoting brotherhood and academic excellence, while providing service and advocacy to the community. More information about the Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is available at MOL Alphas on Facebook or via email at molalphas at gmail.com. Celebrating Women's History Month on KLEK 102.5 FM. Here's your Women's History Moment with Dr. Sharice jones Branch. This is Dr. Sharice Jones Branch, and this is your Women's History Moment. Annie McDaniel Abrams was born on September 25, 1931 in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. Abrams attended the Peak School, the segregated school in Arkadelphia, until the age of 13. In 1944, her mother sent her to Little Rock to continue her education. She graduated from Dunbar High School in 1950 and from Dunbar Junior College in 1952 with a degree in teacher education. Abrams taught in Mariana, Arkansas until 1956 when she accepted a position with the Arkansas Teachers Association. She married married Orville Abrams, with whom she had four children. She later attended Philander Smith College and graduated with a BA in special education in 1962. Abrams was a close associate of Daisy Bates during the 1957 Central High School crisis and was involved in Democratic Party politics and the YWCA in the 1970s. In the 1980s, she helped establish an annual Martin Luther King Day parade and was part of a successful effort to rename a street in Little Rock in his honor. Abrams has received numerous honors for her community service and activism. In 2010, she was inducted into the Arkansas Hall of Fame. Abrams currently resides in Little Rock. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Mm 
Oops, sorry. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLAK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Kabila Jones, and my special guest is Mrs. Kara Maxwell. Uh, we're talking about all things lymphedema, and I want to thank everyone that has tuned in to the show and to our Facebook live stream. We have a message from Miss Lauren Basie. Let me read her message. Um... She says, Kobila Jones, I work for the American Cancer Society in Northeast Arkansas now. Thank you for bringing awareness to this. Here is more information on our ACS website if you'd like to share. So there's a link in our Facebook live stream, and I'll make sure to share this on my page so that you can also click on. Um, this is the American Cancer Society, but there's a, some information for people with lymphedema. So thank you so very much. Miss Lauren Ann for sharing that information. I'll make sure to go check that out. I'm always trying to do more reading, more research, so that I can be a an effective advocate when I'm out and about in the community and spreading the word. I want this information to become so second nature that I can say it in my sleep. <laughs> um, but before I go any further, I want to give a shout out. I hope everyone can see this. This book is called Swollen, Bloated, and Puffy. There was a lady by Miss Kathleen Lyson, or Leeson. I'm sorry if I misspelled her, mispronounced her name. She's a certified lymphedema therapist out of California. She saw one of my Instagram posts and she was like, you know, thank you for sharing this information. I want to send you a book that you can give away at your lunch and learn today. So whoever attends the lunch and learn will have a chance to win this book. And this book is a manual lymphatic drainage therapist guide to reducing swelling in the face and the body is you don't have to have lymphedema to practice lymphatic massage techniques everyone should actually be practicing techniques to keep your lymphatic system functioning properly because you don't want to run the risk of developing lymphedema my um lymphedema therapist actually had my husband come in and she gave him lessons on how to do it and until she was comfortable with the way he was doing it, she continued to teach him how to do it so that he could do it at home. Yes, I remember when I went to see my therapist, shout out to Mrs. Chris Ashley at Health South. Um, she taught me how to do the massage, what area to do it in, you know, what direction. And she gave me lots and lots of handouts of some simple exercises that I can do. And you don't realize how you can move your body to manipulate your lymphatic system. And just the lightest pressure can do so much. Yes. Yeah, it for another that's another thing she taught me. With the lymphatic system, it doesn't take hard massage, hard, you know, deep massages because your lymph vessels are very close to your skin. Light touches in a very systematic manner um, will get the job done. Um, you can do it just think of you're putting lotion on your arms or your body, you know, how lightly you go. It's that light, that light of a touch. So, again, our Lunch and Learn today, 12 p.m. Health South Rehabilitation Hospital. Please come out and support us. This is our first one of hopefully many more to come. Maybe not Lunch and Learn, but more community events will come this year. So, any final thoughts, Carol, as we wrap up? Yes. To know that there are more people out there struggling and dealing with this not just physically but emotionally and psychologically that lymphedema isn't just a physical disease or condition it's a mental and psychological one as well that's right so please be encouraged and thank everyone out there for supporting us and all that we do thank you for supporting klek thank you klek for allowing us to come on to talk about this condition. So I hope that you have learned a little bit of something today. Thank everyone in our Facebook live stream. And if you'd like to learn more, come out to the lunch and learn. All right. <laughs> today, 12 o'clock, Health South Rehab. And you've been tuning into Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm Quabila Jones. I got used to saying that again. And this is Miss <laughs> Kara Maxwell. You guys have a great and wonderful day. All right.